I know some of you are thinking about this light shining behind me. Like, Scott, turn that light down a little bit. It's kind of bright. Let me ask you this. You're going to ask God to turn his light down because his lights are kind of bright. But you notice, too, that you're, you're watching this. This light is it's bright, but it's not hurting your eyes. You notice how the picture is kind of adjusting it a little bit? So it's kind of evening everything out so you can actually see me. But still, but the light's not really kind of affecting the message or what I'm actually saying. This is really good. I'm kind of aiming this to a, to a degree. I'm going to tell you something from the bottom of my heart because, you know, I know you're everyone's, uh, this coronavirus is on everyone's mind. People are just seeing this as, as overblown. Some people are seeing it very serious. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say from the, I'm going to say for the record, I think that we should, we should keep an eye on it. We should not ignore it. But, you know, we should not take our eyes off the author and the finisher of our faith. And I am so thankful for every single situation. This coronavirus is not part of God's design. But, you know, the Bible tells us that all things work together for good for those who love him. And if we allow him to work through us, he can take something like the coronavirus and use it to help build you to become something stronger. For example, in my case, my son, of course, I'm sure many of you who have children are now homeschooling your kids because now the schools are closed and you have to work with the programs. And I got a, I got a big house to take care of. I got, I've got my job, which I'm, they've, they've allowed me to take my stuff at home so I can work from home. I can help homeschool my child and help take care of my mother who's living with us right now, whose health is not looking very good right now. So I'm doing three jobs and helping clean up the house and making sure everything is taken care of as well. So you know what? I can do all things through Christ. He strengthens me. I don't look at the circumstances that are presented to me, but my goodness, I look at the God who strengthens me and who fills me up and who has, who has already finished my faith. He's finished my faith, and I just let him finish it. I don't pick up the paintbrush and let him finish the strokes. I just sit back and just let him handle it, and I just stay by him through every single step of the way because that's exactly all he wants us to do. Why make it more complicated? We just love to complicate things. We love to blow things up. We love to just warn people. We love to make things more serious. We love to make things just bigger and more explosive and and just more grand and f just f full of everything. But you know what? We're full of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying that because it's what the Bible says. I'm saying it because it's true. The Bible affirms it for who we are. This is why I'm, I'm always such a big proponent of just experiencing him in prayer and just letting him just reveal himself and share himself with you. So you're saying, I, I can't know God unless I experience him? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You Experiencing him is, is the perfect way to know God. If, if you wrote a book about yourself, and you basically tell other people, okay, here, I'm going to tell you some things about myself. Now, you go tell that to other people. And those people read it. Will they know everything about you? W would they? I'm asking you honestly. Do you think they would? No. How do you think they would know everything about you? Or at least enough to know about you, about your heart, by experiencing you through communication, through bonding, through knowing that person. That's what prayer is all about. Prayer is seen as simply an event of supplication by so many Christians. If you need something, just ask God. And certainly prayer can be used for that, but prayer is used as, as more than just that, and it's more than a communion. It's a bonding. It's a bonding to get to know your Father, to know what He has already done for you to know his heart, to understand that it doesn't matter what you have done, he loves you regardless. Let's read the story of the prodigal son. You know, if any, if any verse of the Bible 
aside from the words of Jesus stand out to me, it's that one. Because, it's, you know, it showed that no matter what that son did, the father just welcomed him back. He didn't care. He just wanted his son to come home. And that's the way that God, way God, God looks at you. He just wants you to come home. He doesn't care what you've done, what you've been doing, if you've had too much to drink, if you've had all these problems. He said, all my sins, all your sins, I will remember no more. I really remember that kind of prominently. And that's the truth, because he loves you. When you read the Bible through the lens of his heart, you see the Bible as more than just doctrine. You see that as a love letter. The Old Testament is God's journey towards you. The New Testament is God walking among us, and our Testament is God in us. <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful through all times, and these times where people are freaking out, and I'm, I'm guilty because I need jerk, and I, sometimes I listen to people who are of this world, and I, and I don't have my mind set. Because he said, of course, in his word, in the Bible, it says he says, he said, "I will give you perfect peace." You know, when my when your mind is stayed upon me, he said that straight out. And when my mind is not on him and my mind is on the world, that's when I start drifting away and I start freaking out. So I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. You are too. Don't don't lie. Don't lie. You are. Don't worry about it. And God's not going to love you any less because you do. So don't ask for forgiveness. Because every time I go to kneel before God, before I even get start to shrink down to my knee, he lifts me up and just embraces me and says, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You're my son. You're in my arms. You're not at my feet. You're in my arms. And if you have believed in Jesus Christ... You are a child of God, and you are in that same position. You are in that same position. He is our loving Father. We are family. I take everything that this world shows throws at me right now, and I just kind of look at it. It's so easy to just pull out the good in it now. Before, it was just easy to pull out the bad in it, because... Everything out there from the worldly to the media, everything can pull out the bad at everything and, and blow it up. But when you look at everything through the heart of Christ, it's so easy to see the good in everything. Isn't it? Come on. Oh, I want to say so much more, but I don't want to drag it out too long. That's all I'm going to say tonight. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great night. I love you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Good night.